recently, 91% of Americans have a favorable view of the Postal Service, making it the most beloved and popular federal agency. During the coronavirus pandemic, the Postal Service's value has proven greater than ever, and that's evident to every American. A, a June 2020 Harris poll found that the Postal Service ranked as the most single most essential company to Americans during the pandemic, outranking companies that manufacture PPE and sanitizers. According to a recent Inspector General report, however, the Postal Service is not meeting the needs of every customer. In fact, the Postal Service Office of Inspector General found that the Postal Service only met service performance targets for three of 33 products it looked at in fiscal year 2020. Why are service performance targets important? Well, the Inspector General said, missing delivery goals could result in late fees and even a drop in credit ratings for customers, as well as a disruption in cash flow for businesses. In other words, it can disrupt the economy. They added that late deliveries may drive mailers away from using the Postal Service to more nimble electronic options. And the IG added, once a consumer moves their bill payment online, they may be unlikely to go back to using the mail. I think that's a polite way of saying you lose that customer forever. Simply put, missing service standards hurts those who rely on the Postal Service and ultimately can prove to be a death spiral for the Postal Service. Despite the importance of meeting service standards in the first three quarters of fiscal year 2021, three to five day mail has been delivered on time only 61%. In the first three quarters of fiscal year 2021, magazines were delivered on time only 64%. And while service standards have improved in recent months, those improvements are likely attributable to a drastic decrease in service standard targets. So in other words, when Louis DeJoy, the Postmaster General, noticed we weren't meeting targets, he lowered the targets. We're here in Chicago today because this area is among the hardest hit by substandard delivery. And because Chicago is a city with a storied postal history, Charles Lindbergh once actually flew a postal plane here in Chicago. Our history goes back to 1831 with the appointment of Chicago's first postmaster general, an illustrious predecessor of yours, Mr. Morgan. By 1864, Chicago began at home, de home de mail delivery with the innovation of letter carriers. By the turn of the 20th century, Chicago's big businesses like Sears and Montgomery Ward relied on the post office to deliver their catalogs and advertisements that changed retail in America, paving the way for what is today a $1.6 trillion postal industry that employs 7.3 million people. In 1966, massive mail delays in Chicago prompted congressional investigations, which led in 1971 to the law creating the U.S. Postal Service as an independent establishment of the executive branch of government. Today's hearing continues a robust and important tradition of Postal Service oversight by Congress. If you look at the screen, and hopefully see something other than me, there we go. Uh, this tells you a lot of what we need to know. We need to know why in Chicago on-time delivery rates dropped 7.8% during the third quarter when compared to last year's delivery rates. And this calculation does not factor in the Postal Service's reduced delivery standards. Um, in the slide on the screen, you can see that COVID-19 was declared a public health emergency in late January 2020, but service standards did not start to plummet until July. So the idea that, well, this is all due to the pandemic is not borne out by the fact that from January through July, that is not what happened. And, and arguably, that was the worst of the pandemic because we were in strict lockdowns. There were strict regulations, strict measures, uh, being employed to try to keep people safe. We didn't have vaccines, and yet delivery did pretty well until July. 
as the slide also shows, these massive drops in service uh, in Chicago are substantial and place the city well below the national on-time average, but they're not the worst in the nation. Baltimore has the largest reduction in service standards in the country, and you can see that with that very bottom line. That's Baltimore. In quarter two of fiscal 2021, two-day meal delivery in Baltimore was on time only slightly more than half the time, and three- to five-day delivery was on time only 32.4%. We expect and demand more from our postal service. To do that, we need to provide it the resources and staffing it requires to meet customer needs. Instead, we're witnessing service delay de degradation and price hikes. Postmaster General DeJoy continues to make consequential and damaging operational changes in the Postal Service that affect postal delivery nationwide. And he repeatedly has done so without conducting the data analyses or customer engagements required to ensure he's not causing unwitting damage. I've written four letters just this year to the Postmaster General and the Board of Governors of the Postal Service expressing grave concerns about these management decisions, fleet contracts, and conflicts of ethical concern. I am particularly concerned about his 10-year plan, which reduces service standards further and increases prices, a novel business model if successful. The Postal Regulatory Commission's advisory opinion of that plan to reduce delivery standards stated, and I quote, it is not clear that the trade-off between financial viability and maintaining high-quality service standards is reasonable, unquote. DeJoy's actions have, I think, contributed significantly to the ability of Chicago, uh, in, in deteriorating Chicago's post offices and mail deliveries in order to meet customers' needs. According to the Postal Service Office of Inspector General, four of Chicago's busiest post offices had difficulty grasping the scope of their own problems. If you look at the screen again, you'll see a table from a recent OIG report showing that four Chicago area post offices undercounted or delayed mail in their facilities by 59,752 pieces, a 95% undercount. Or, in other words, they only got 5% right. Uh, and on the next slide, you can see that these same post offices underreported non-delivered mail by a 98% rate of underreporting. In other words, they only got 2%, which is kind of stunning. <clears throat> These are letters and packages we're talking about from family members to celebrate holidays and birthdays and anniversaries. They're bill payments that generate late fees for those who are trying to pay on time during a pandemic, I might add. These are paychecks people rely on to keep food on the table. We cannot allow this to continue. Today, we've got witnesses who can help us define the root problems at these Chicago area postal facilities. And we have witnesses who need to be part of designing and implementing solutions. The issues plaguing Chicago, however, should not be viewed as anomalies, unfortunately. These service delays are occurring throughout the United States. We're going to work together as colleagues to solve these problems and to hopefully change the governance of the Postal Service to ensure that we have a Board of Governors and a Postmaster General who are, in fact, dedicated to the mission, which is delivering mail and packages on a timely and efficient basis to every household and every business in America every day. Thank you. I now call on the ranking minority member, Mr.